KUAM TV 8, first on Guam. KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, protecting Micronesia for 85 years. Matson and the Adahi Itano program. Apply at matson.com. Cars Plus, Guam's automotive leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime, day two in the search for the driver involved in a deadly weekend crash, the latest with the Guam police investigation into a late night hit and run in Tizen. Plus, harsher punishments for those convicted of sex crimes in Guam, the Attorney General going before senators to show support for a bill that would do just that. And honoring our ancestors, a solemn ceremony laying to rest 2,000 year old remains uncovered during a project more than 30 years ago. Half a day and good evening. Welcome to KUAM News Primetime. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Thank you so much for starting your week here with us. Well, Des, we begin with a manhunt underway for a suspect wanted in connection to a carjacking reported at Mobile Gas Station in Mighty in early March. Guam police issuing a wanted flyer for 27-year-old Lacey Hawk. If you've seen this man on your screen, you are asked to call police immediately. As KUAM reported, it was on March 5th the alleged car drag carjacker asked a 76 year old man for a ride before jumping into the victim's pickup truck and taking off. The victim was injured after being dragged while trying to hang on to his vehicle. Again, if you've seen this man, police, please call police, Guam police. Now to a major drug bust inside the Department of Corrections prison uncovered. More than 100 grams of the drug ice, glass pipes, vapes, and cell phones all found during a shakedown at the Manila facility. The Drug Enforcement Administration is investigating. Authorities now eyeing two inmates for their alleged roles in getting the large amounts of meth on the inside. Plastic baggies filled with drugs. Substantial size of crystal meth. More than 100 grams of meth along with these other contraband items found during a random shakedown at the Department of Corrections prison on March 12th. DEPCOR Director Fred Berdalio confirms it was found at Post 16, which houses general population convicts. Some information has been given to us, right? Uh, hey, uh, to check some of these uh, areas in the facility, right? I, I don't want to get into detail on that because it's still an ongoing investigation. KUAM confirms convicted child molester John Duaneus and convicted drug dealer Richard Espedion are suspects in the alleged smuggling. No charges have been filed against them. The DEA and Guam police are investigating how the drugs got into the facility. If you find that large amount in, the, in, the, in our prison walls, there's someone outside already knows what's happening too. In 2017, the prison was held under the microscope after multiple correctional officers were arrested for helping inmates smuggle drugs inside. Dalio confirms at this point none of his officers are being investigated. He hopes the feds can help them solve the case. The prison also should be a safe, you know, should be a drug-free zone. Now to a manhunt for the driver of a brown sedan that hit and killed a pedestrian in Tizen, now in its second day. The crash claiming the life of one man. The crash unfolding just after 10 p.m. Saturday along East Sunset Boulevard in Tizen. The only details authorities learned so far was that the driver was in a brown colored sedan and fled the scene. Authorities looking for the victims next of kin. Anyone with information that could help them track down the suspect, you're asked to call Guam Police. Well, the fate of an accused child molester now rests in the hands of a superior court jury. Trial for defendant Gregorio Dena Marquez comes to a close today. Parties giving closing arguments before the jury left to deliberate. Julian Hernandez reports. The week-long trial for alleged child molester Gregorio Dena Marquez comes to an end. A Superior Court jury today starting deliberations. Prosecuting attorney Sean Brown during closing arguments says several witnesses testified sharing why Dena Marquez should be found guilty. Brown adding the teenage victim showed strength after facing her alleged abuser. Is a tough kid. No matter what anybody says about her, she went through this entire experience. She didn't back down from hours of testimony. 
Defense attorney William Gavris told the jury the child and other witnesses continuously gave conflicting testimony during trial. Why is he saying two and he's sitting down and she's saying one standing up? I don't have to know. They have the burden of proving beyond a reasonable doubt that he did it and he did it for sexual gratification. I think that inconsistency right there is puts a lot of doubt that he did it for sexual gratification. By the way, that's what the mom said. Dena Marquez was on trial facing five counts of second degree criminal sexual conduct. Julian Hernandez, KUEM News. There is a war being raged on our children. That's what Public Safety Oversight Chair expressed on a bill dealing with sex crimes. The proposed measure, which would implement harsher punishment for certain sex offenders, getting overwhelming support from the law enforcement community. Imagine this, a person being sexually abused or raped almost every day on Guam. Most victims are female, and many of them are children. These aren't just words, but a bleak reality highlighted by Shirley Antelon, program director of Healing Hearts Crisis Center, the only rape crisis center on the island. Antelon testifying in support of Bill 183, a measure seeking to toughen the penalties for those convicted of first and second degree criminal sexual conduct against children under 12 years old. Antelon backing the proposed minimum sentences, 25 years for first-degree CSC and 10 years for second-degree offenders, amid what she calls an epidemic. Statistics for January 2024 to March 2024, we have seen 21 clients. 18 are females, 3 are males. Of the 21, 3 are between the ages of 0 to 6, 4 are between the, the ages of 7 to 12, 6 are between the ages of 13 to 17, Four were between the ages of 18 to 24, as well for ages 25 to 59. It's a problem reflected in the number of criminal sexual conduct complaints received by the Guam Police Department. Most recently in 2023, of the 233 complaints GPD received, 166 victims were under the age of 17. The issue prompting Antelon to recommend to lawmakers that convicted sex offenders receive mandatory counseling on top of the already suggested lifetime monitoring. But the island's attorney general proposes even stricter punishment. You have mandatory life sentences without parole. Now, people might think that that's harsh, but I believe that the uh, professionals, the psychiatric professionals will tell you that the ability to reform a sexual predator, a pedophile specifically, are very low. Once a pedophile, always a pedophile. The AG asking the legislature to further build on his suggestion. At least put a speedy trial right for the pedophiles. That we can take them from the moment of that police complaint, take them before the magistrate, take them before the grand jury, and then take them into trial within 60 days. While testimonies heavily leaned in favor of the bill, other concerns included overcrowding at the Department of Corrections due to longer prison terms and whether the suggestions made today would undermine a judge's sentencing. Well, time for a quick break. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM, your leader in local news. Rooted in the community since 1995, Kmart is here to serve you 24 hours a day. From essentials to fill your pantry to delightful treats, our selection of groceries have everything you need to stock your kitchen with love. Step directly into style with the latest fashion finds in shoes and clothing for the family at unbeatable prices. Turn your living space into a dream home with our unparalleled selection of home goods. Illuminate your shopping experience and brighten your budget every week with our blue light specials. These specials are a testament to our commitment to offering the biggest variety for the best value. Discover a world where quality and savings meets convenience. Kmart is your one-stop shop where every visit is an adventure. Shop smart and save big at Kmart, your Guam shopping destination. At Not Howie says Taco Bell only really hits after midnight, which is why I'm going to use the Cantina chicken menu to help him see the Taco Bell light. It hits. Hi. <laughs> Are you at Not Howie? The food hits, right? The Cantina chicken crispy taco isn't just for late night. 
Cantina Chicken Quesadilla isn't just for late night, because it has a perfect slow roasted chicken to melted cheese ratio. That's chicken on the inside, cheese everywhere else. Introducing the new Cantina Chicken Quesadilla only at Taco Bell. Welcome back to Primetime. Ten years after the CNMI inked an exclusive gaming license into law, the Commonwealth Casino Commission is expected to hold a revocation hearing for Imperial Pacific International's license. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglotnia reports. The gaming license revocation hearing scheduled for April 2nd is delayed to April 9th at 10 a.m. at the Commonwealth Casino Commission office. The Commission's Vice Chair Ralph Demapon informed KUAM of the CCC's vote to reschedule over the weekend as Imperial Pacific International filed an emergency temporary restraining order calling to stop it. House lawmaker Marissa Flores spoke out about the matter at a recent session. She noted that it was 10 years ago that the public law was signed to authorize, establish, and regulate an exclusive gaming license. Regarding the recent emergency temporary restraining order filed by IPI, claiming that their due process has been violated, the Commonwealth and its people have been violated and denied too. If the Commission decides not to revoke their license, the Commonwealth and its people should recommend to the governor to immediately take action and remove the members of the commission. It's time to move forward. $73 million from IPI that is due will allow some breathing, breathing space during these difficult times. Senator Karina Magofnia, who chairs the gaming committee, said she hopes they can find a middle ground. We spoke to her after last week's CCC meeting. We need to figure out what we want to do with the casino and the industry itself. So I am hopeful that, you know, we could still salvage whatever is left, provided that we are very, very careful, you know, in the actions that we take going forward and we put controls in place to ensure that a lot of the things that has happened in the past does not uh, happen again. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. A very special and solemn reburial ceremony was held recently for 2,000-year-old remains that were uncovered during a project in 1980. Jonah Gancharfres has mourned an event that the historic state preservation officer called history in the making. The ancient remains of three women over 2,000 years old were laid in their final resting place deep in the jungle of Taragi Beach, just inside Anderson Air Force Base, in a reburial ceremony. Patrick Lujan is a Guam State Preservation Officer who helped coordinate the internment along with the base. They really did work with us, um, uh, us taking the lead as to how the ceremony would go, and they were in, you know, in total support. Um, with, with all the arrangements logistically and um, coordinated the, the, the whole ceremony with the tomorrow chanters, how things were going to go about. Um, we requested, you know, that there was no military presence. Uh, since 2,000 years ago, there was no military presence and, and Anderson granted that with us. So it was a really solemn ceremony. According to Lujan, the remains were unearthed during a University of Guam archaeological dig in 1980. In 1983, some of those remains were shipped to a lab at UC Riverside for radiocarbon dating. The rest remained here in the Navy's inventory. It wasn't until last year where the remains were flown back to Guam. This is the first time we've done a reburial in Guam that resembles some sense of traditional um, reburying as opposed to westernized reburials that we've, we, we've grown accustomed to over, over the past years. On March 23rd, with descendants of Taragi, island dignitaries, Hiro Kurishino, the archaeologist who led the dig in 1980, and the Guam State Historic Preservation Office in attendance, the remains wrapped in linen and placed in woven coconut leaf baskets, along with artifacts found with them, were lovingly placed in the ground during a ceremony in Tamoru. <laughs> It was a very unique ceremony, um, very moving, very touching, and um, you know we just hope to continue to do these types of uh, ceremonies to honor our ancestors. Jonah 
Jonagan Charfris, KM News. Now for a look at your world at home. Here's a view captured of the mountains in Humatok. Keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replay And I'll be around Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you Calvo's Insurance Count on us for life our new McDonald's Spicy Chicken McNuggets are just the right amount of spicy. A small to medium Sprite kind of spicy. Uh, let's get a McFlurry after this kind of spicy. But if you get the mighty hot sauce, it's a napkins up for foreheads now kind of spicy. Uh, this came from McDonald's kind of spicy? Because our Spicy Chicken McNuggets breaded in tempura and made with cayenne are just the right amount of spicy. Unless you remember what I said about the sauce. ba da ba ba, -ba. Find a plan that goes with your flow. Get unlimited local talk, text, and data at the most affordable rate with unlimited flow postpaid.
Troy Palamalu Safety, AKA the Quiet Storm. Troy seen more out of the corners of his cold steel eyes than most mortal men have seen straight on. The last thing an offense would witness a fury of flowing mane incoming at high speed. Hey! Cat like quickness and supernatural instincts like Troy's only come once in a lifetime. And oh, how grateful we are that they came in ours. No one made the beloved burg of Pittsburgh feel quite as safe as this safety. The Hyundai Tucson with advanced safety and tech because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. Only Pizza Hut lets you surround your favorite pizza with greatness. The one and only stuffed crust pizza tempts your taste buds with melted cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. And at just $18.99 with one topping, the stuffed crust pizza is truly irresistible. So grab your slice of pizza perfection with cheesy goodness baked right into the crust. The stuffed crust pizza, just $18.99 with one topping. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. Hi, and I'm Clay Valerian, a student at Harvest Christian Academy, and we are Spark Ambassadors. Today we are at Oakwood High School to celebrate and commemorate the 48th Annual Special Olympics. And here is what happened today. I'm here with Jerry Leon Guerrero, and the first question that we're going to ask is, what is your favorite part about Special Olympics and why? Actually, all the parts of Special Olympics event is my favorite. And the reason is, uh, first of all, our law enforcement court friend that we held this morning at five o'clock was something that you know we don't uh, consistently recognize every year. And so we had over 200 law enforcement come out and they did their uh, run from the Navy all the way to here to Ipidu from 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then as well as my other favorite part would be the parade and the meddling of athletes. I think that's very key because you see the kids come out for all the weeks that they practice mm -hmm. and it paid off at the end whether they win a gold, a silver, or a bronze. You know, every athlete is a winner. Yes, every athlete is a winner. Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, and then the second question is, what is your favorite part about organizing the event and why? Ah, okay. My favorite part of organizing the event and why? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we are a board of seven members mm -hmm. and we are the working mechanism of putting all the events together. And I, I have to say that uh, we all kind of um, have our own, own um, areas that we take care of and we chair. But one thing we have to say about uh, our board is we work together as a group and I think it's very key that we uh, support each other, uh, especially assisting each other in some overlaps that we may have. And amazingly, I know we, we garner between over a few thousand people that attend, for instance, track and field, but it's the, the, the six and seven people that actually are the hub of trying to get everything all organized. There's really not one, just one thing, because I think we are a master of, uh, you know, we're we, we, we're, a, we're a very good multitasking organization. And so uh, we are like this op octopus that has a lot of tentacles and ends up doing a lot of things, right? So I would have to say that it's uh, there's not not one special part of organizing it. I think that we all put a hand into organizing the events. Oh, I love that. It's like teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, teamwork yes. makes the dream work. And we're back with our second interviewee, Mr. Frank Ford. And for your first question, uh, 
can you summarize Special Olympics in your own words? Sure. Uh, Special Olympics, to me, is a community project that moves forward. Everyone in our community is involved, parents, athletes, uh, sponsors, uh, the community both inside and outside defense, mm -hmm. so that includes military and local, mm -hmm. uh, and we're all focused at, at one focal point, and that is to bring the best games we can to persons with intellectual or physical disabilities. Yes. Aww, okay. Then, following up that, the second question is, why is the Special Olympics so important for Guam? I, I think it's really important because, as our mission statement states, is that we take persons with disabilities mm -hmm. and we teach them through sports mm -hmm. on how to become productive uh, citizens of our island people. Giving them an outlet. Yes. Oh, I love it. Okay. And then your final question. What has been your favorite thing today and why? What favorite thing? I think, uh, well, actually everything is special about the day. But I think, and you'll find, you may as well find this out when you leave today, is that you're looking at an athlete, and that athlete knew that for that moment in time, when they were getting their awards, that they, they were the focal point of the team. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, regardless of what you're today, that's what you take to the day. You're a winner. You're a winner. We're all gold winners. Yes, oh, I love that. Okay, thank you so much for all your hard work. I've that on many years. <laughs> to give a special thanks to all the hard workers who made this event possible. Your hard work does not go unnoticed. Once again, my name is Sierra. And I'm Chloe. And we're Spark Ambassadors for school year 2023 and 2024. Thanks, thanks for watching. Are you ready to run? We certainly hope that you are because the Koku Marathon is coming up. Man, this is an amazing sports event, everybody. Register now for the Guam Koku Weekend Kids Fun Run or the Guam Koku Road Race. You know what? Do both. Hedge your bets. All right. Make sure you register before April 6th because half marathon is 40. 10K run walk is just $30. Check out visitguam.com slash coco for more. An opening reception is going to be held down at the museum for the Families That Fish. It's an exhibit on display until June 14th at admission 100% free. And the memories and the lessons that you'll take away from this about our people and who we are in connection to Mother Earth and to the ocean are timeless. The Marianas Flower Festival is coming up, so if you're in the CNMI, celebrate everything. Flora and fauna. It's at Sugar King Park on April 5th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Good things happening right here on the island of Guam, and that's our mission here A News Bites, and you know what? Mission accomplished. Now to your birthday shout-outs. Here's your Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club shout-out submitted on KUAM.com. We got another one of our awesome KUN kids who has a birthday today, everybody, on the 1st of April. So happy birthday to Gideon Cole Jackson. Happy birthday, Gideon, nine years old today. Mom, dad, and the rest of the family are super proud of you. And all of us here, your KUM family, we're super, super happy for you. We're really, really proud of the young man that you are turning out to be. And we'll see you around the office, okay? Hey, happy birthday, Gideon. Belated birthday wishes going out to Jadison Pangolin and happiest terrific two birthday to our princess. We are truly proud of all the advanced milestones you've reached and the many things you've learned. You're adventurous, smart, and curious. You are loved way and beyond infinity by all of us. Love from the Bellator's Familia on heaven and on earth. Most especially your best friend, Zimani Zairi, Zion, Guru Boy. We love you and cheers to an amazing two blessed years. 
And that's your primetime show. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Have a great evening and stay beautiful. The island of Guam, a slice of paradise, a beauty rich in its culture and heritage. This month, we celebrate the Chamorro people. Still, the price of calling this place home has only skyrocketed, all while the world around us continues raging a war with Guam, the tip of the spear in the middle. At least 20 years of reported threats to Guam from North Korea. The past decade, Guam has been under heightened protection, with billions being poured into the defense spending budget. That, plus a high-tech system armed to target a missile on course for our island. I'm Destiny Cruz with KUAM News. We bring you our latest special, Guarding the Tip of the Spear. The Guam National Guard recently gave us exclusive access to Site Excalibur. It's the new home to the missile defense system. A look at that. Plus, we revisit some of the events of years past that led us to the push for this specific protection for Guam. Site Excalibur on Guam. It's January 2024. Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Stafford greets us ahead of touring the site. He's the commander of Task Force Talon. Back in 2012 time frame, um, North Korea was making some very um, specific threats against Guam with their ballistic missiles. They had really um, uh, increased their ballistic missile activity. And so uh, during that, that, that time frame, we didn't have an organic missile defense asset here on Guam to protect it. A time now more than a decade ago. In the 2013 time frame, our, our FAD system, theater high altitude air defense system, um, uh, had just come online. And, um, and with, with, with that system, we were able to deploy it here um, back in April of 2013, provide a persistent missile defense capability for um, all the people um, here, on, here on Guam. And so now the task force has been here for over, over 10 years providing that missile defense uh, for, for this island. In March 2013, North Korea ordered all of its field artillery units, including strategic rocket units and long-range artillery unit, to be on high alert. That there are multi-layered defense systems. The administration on Guam paying close attention. The U.S. military then also had B-52 bombers participating in military exercises in South Korea. It's news the North did not take well. A threat from that and an execution of a threat would be, um, would be met with defensive action and if needed offensive action to stop the threat. The leadership there in North Korea obviously is is uh, unpredictable that uh, the U.S. is in the peacekeeping and deterring war role that um, response to threats like that will be, won't be taken lightly. Koreans that called Guam home chimed in on the threats to the island. Our community worry about North Korea's keep on uh, threatening about even South Korea and U.S., including Guam and Okinawa, particularly as as our the Korean community, uh, also we are uh, families in still Korea, so we care and worry. The Korean community on Guam taking each threat seriously, and the rest of the world watched as those threats lingered on. The North Koreans have to understand that um, uh, what they're doing is, is very dangerous. The same concerns brought up by local educators the months that followed. This is something that is now going to be you know, part of our lives uh, from here on, just because maybe you know, we're not going to have an attack. That doesn't mean that the threat is ever going to go away. And, and so because of that, obviously, it, it, it is concerning for a lot of people in our community. And it's important that uh, we provide the kind of context that we can to let people be able to move on with their lives. A year later in Washington, then Congresswoman Madeleine Bordalio answering questions about the defense system being placed on Guam. The people of Guam are very supportive of that remaining on the island. 
but we acknowledge it may have to redeploy if other contingencies arise. So that said, can you comment on efforts to keep the THAAD on Guam and in the coming years? We are at least working to see what it would take to sustain the THAAD battery there for the long term. And we're working with the Air Force. Uh, so we're taking it and we're looking at it from an Army perspective. What, what would it mean if we had to sustain that there for the long term in terms of rotational capabilities, the type of that. So we're clearly looking at that and preparing if that decision is made that we want to, we want to leave it there. Uh, the, the deployment has gone very well. We're very pleased with the support we've gotten there. Uh, I know the PACOM commander supports it staying there in Guam. By November 2016, the first forward deployed THAAD battery was permanently put in place on Guam. We engage missiles in the, what we call the terminal phase. Military officials have said the defense system relies on both human and computer capabilities and has proven to work against cyber attacks. But it is in 2017 all eyes were back on Guam as the threats from North Korea heated up tremendously. A look back at that and more coming up. You're watching a KUAM News special guarding the tip of the spear. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Guam is the target. That was the threat sent across the globe from North Korea in 2017. I'm Destiny Cruz. You're watching a KUAM News special guarding the tip of the spear. While all eyes were on our tiny island that year, the people here still continued with life as they knew it. Coming to you this Wednesday morning with the developing story today involving the U.S. and North Korea. Guam at the center of it all today. It would take 14 to 15 minutes for a missile launched from North Korea to reach us here in the territory. A scare that brought so many to the island to witness the threat all unfold. This is not the first time that North Korea has made threats, and it certainly won't be the last. So while we take North Korea very, very seriously, seriously enough that we put a THAAD battery in Guam several years ago, uh, I share Secretary Tillerson's view that there's no imminent threat to Guam right now. Guam is the target, the impending threat coming from the North Korean regime. I'm not really nervous. I'm, I'm pretty confident in our military capability. I guess the first thing that comes to mind is, uh, you know, immediately first, where is my family? You know, to come up with a plan about if anything happens and we're apart, uh, you know, how, where do we meet and if we're all separated? Well, if it's the United States says they're going to uh, give them a last warning, they should, because it's going to keep escalating. President Donald Trump warning the North's Kim Jong-un about targeting American soil. Let's see what he does with Guam. He does something in Guam, it will be an event the likes of which nobody's seen before, what will happen in North Korea. Fortunately, the threat was just that and nothing more. The 2017 scare only warranted greater defense. This marks the first time that a terminal high altitude area defense task force security mission transitions between Army and National Guard Army units. Guam troops taking on the responsibility to be a close player in the defense of the island. In February 2019, the THAAD security was transferred to the Guam National Guard. Your work over the last year has indeed brought us a sense of comfort and a peace of mind. And now, Soldiers from a tiny yet powerful place will be taking over to relieve you so you can return to your home and loved ones. 
We had a great training with them and they're very capable and they will do an excellent job picking up where we left off. So the people of Guam should rest assured that they're in safe hands. The mission growing as plans for expanded missile defense capabilities to be put in place across the island and deployments for Guam's troops that on this mission keeps them here. This formation behind us, you know, with their mission, it's, it's the most critical for uh, the future conflicts uh, to prevent that. There's really nothing better than National Guard soldiers actively participating in defending their homeland. Even after a pandemic, global attention on defense expansion in Guam never waned. air and missile defense system proposed. Guam is being used as an experimental test site for missile defense development in general. Guam is being shaped into a laboratory for a conflict ecosystem in the, the Indo-Pacific and we have no real choice in the matter. Locals and politicians shared concern during a town hall at Guam's legislature just last summer. Most people I talk to about this and I'd be talking to everyone around me. They share my same concerns, but they feel powerless. What can I do? I can't do nothing, it's just gonna go on. And when there's a people such as ourselves that are so politically powerless, we need our elected officials to step up. We need you to fight for us, please. All of our children's lives is at stake. We're talking about war with China where we get destroyed for imperial purposes. It's going to take more land away from tomorrow people. Um, it's going to make us more vulnerable when we're already so vulnerable um, here on our island. After we, we have to look at all of these existing problems and measure this as a, as a new challenge, a new risk. Um, not to mention, you know, that uh, the, these reactors will be all around the island. These launchers will be all around the island, not just on the base, but in the community. And how that's also going to impact our relations with other people or even visitors coming to Guam. We know that the threat to the community is being spread beyond the bases and into the broader community. I think the most important part of what we've learned, it's very little, but they this established that 20 sites have been selected based on extensive siting studies to confirm alternative site selection, optimize system performance, and optimize facility design. To be a part of this mission is something that allows us to serve both the people of the United States and the people of Guam. As our speakers said, uh, Lieutenant Governor Josh Sonorio and our TAG, General Cruz, both said um, that this is, it's important to the people of Guam because we are going to be protecting an asset that defends our homeland. Um, this is just as important as any other mission uh, going overseas. Guam's been through generations of trying to defend its people. This year, we commemorate 80 years since being liberated from Japanese occupation. But the ongoing divide in the discussion on how to guard Guam has really no end in sight. Next, a look at Site Excalibur and the men and women who are a part of all of it. More of your KUEM News special, Guarding the Tip of the Spear, in just a moment. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. At Not Howie says Taco Bell only really hits after midnight, which is why I'm going to use the Cantina Chicken Menu to help him see the Taco Bell light. Mm, very juicy. <laughs> Hi. The uh, food hits, right? Are you at Not Howie? Does it hit or does it not hit? I'd say it hits. Yeah, it does hit. I can't lie. Okay, but you did, maybe. Maybe. 
Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco isn't just for late night. A couple soldiers stationed in Guam and a hundred operating Japan-based radars, all set up in the northern part of the island and under the watch of Task Force Talon. I'm Destiny Cruz. This is a KUAM News special, Guarding the Tip of the Spear. For the remainder of your show, we bring you along for our exclusive tour of Side Excalibur. From Anderson Air Force Base to South Finnegadsen, this is the site you need to know about. It's where the Terminal High Altitude Missile Defense System is currently located. Bringing us along for the tour is Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Stafford. He's the commander of Task Force Talon, all too familiar with threat after threat after threat. So how do you guys feel? You guys are here boots on the ground. Yeah, so um, our soldiers are very well trained and our, and our systems is very capable. So for any threats coming from North Korea, um, our, feel confident that we will be able to protect this island uh, from those threats. The team is set up outdoors. You do have a very impressive setup over here, so can you kind of take us through this? Yes. All right. All right, so at this time, I'll go ahead and um, introduce you to Captain Borgonia. So Captain Borgonia, he is our security force uh, commander um, here for the THAAD site, and he's part of the, the Guam National Guard, who are very, very important mission partners for Task Force Town to be able to execute our uh, defensive Guam mission here. This commander shows us the layout of the defense system and its surrounding area. It's their combat zone. This site just the launching point of a bigger defense project, which includes building a 360-degree missile defense system in multiple locations across Guam. The increase in security motivated by potential threats from China and North Korea. The Missile Defense Agency estimates the expansion will be operational by 2027. Hi, good morning, ma'am. Welcome to uh, Sykes Gathering. Captain Bergonia is the Sec 4 commander with the Guam National Guard. The area is all mapped out. Currently, we're over here at Sykes Excalibur. Uh, Orienting you to the north was is Camp Bloss, and then we have Site Armadillo, which used to be the old that site. Over here to the south, we have Guam Regional Medical Center, which is a local hospital. To the west is Tangisin, which is our the man-made water to the beach. And then where you guys came along was Route 3. Uh, going over to our area of operations actually is, this is the site Excalibur where you guys are currently at now. We're currently here at our battle operations center, the BDOC, and which you guys came over through the entry control point. Um, our mission is to conduct an area defense in order to secure the key assets that are central for the defense of Guam and the Marianas. A mission they do by manning 24-7 security operations. Soldiers are assigned to keep on patrol conducting checks at least hourly. Cameras are strategically placed throughout for surveillance and the troops conduct constant checks of perimeter wires. But the mission is more than just protecting the THAAD. This mission is very personal to us as we have a big key stakeholder piece. This, these assets protect our home, our family, and our friends. So having a role in this is a privilege and an honor. So thank you. Thank you so much for your service. We really uh, appreciate you guys letting us into your work that you're doing. And we really want to highlight the stories of all of these soldiers. So without further ado, is it okay if you take this to the Absolutely. His duty to protect his loved ones and Team who share that pride. Thank you guys for letting us in today. Uh, my cameraman's coming in. We just want to capture all the great work that you guys are doing, kind of get to know what the mission is, what you guys' daily life looks like, and I understand this mission is especially close to home, being from Guam. Assigned to one of the tower's specialist blogs, he says he grew up around the military lifestyle. Being uh, soldiers from Guam, we take a lot of pride in uh, this mission is specifically to uh, protect our families and um, in the capability of the defending the Marianas also. All right, so, so can you tell me a little bit about your family? Um, family, I come from a family of uh, vets, so you know, they, uh, they really inspired me to do this and to have the privilege to uh, be on this mission, it really motivates me more to defend the Marianas and our island. Yeah. What has your family response been like, you being out here? Uh, you know, they continue to support and uh, make sure that we're okay, so. Yeah, yeah so definitely they're proud, yes, of course. Yes, very proud. 
just like the, the rest of the island, definitely proud of you guys. And I just wanted to ask if there's a message that you'd like to send to your fellow soldiers, what would that message be? Uh, stay motivated. These troops staying motivated, even knowing the mission is risky. Thank you for all your service. Your KUAM News special, Guarding the Tip of the Spear, will be back after this. Brian Dawkins, Safety, a.k.a. Weapon X. Brian laughs at audibles, laughs. For there is nothing he does not anticipate. He is never caught off guard because his guard is always up. His skills of perception are honed like talons. Brian sees all. He knows all. Dominates all. His defensive prowess is feared the world over. The all-electric Hyundai Ionic 5 with advanced safety and tech. Because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. Search for your Hyundai Ionic 5 today. South Korea's Ministry of National Defense reportedly announced an environmental assessment to provide support for the expansion of the U.S. military's deployment of the THAAD system. The Missile Defense Agency continues to support these defense mechanisms, allotting a substantial budget of $801 million for Guam defense in fiscal year 2024. I'm Destiny Cruz. This is a KUAM News special guarding the tip of the spear. 2024 started off with this exclusive look at Site X caliber. The unit less than a year prior had to respond to a natural disaster. This unit specifically was activated for type of OR response. So give, being able to get back to our community, we came from the Greenway sites. We joined the Guam Army National Guard because this is our home. Safety is priority for these soldiers assigned to protect the THAAD system in South Minagadza in Guam. Task Force Talent Commander Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Stafford led us a tour of the site recently. He shared the job here also gives them the sense that they are giving back to the community. Many of our soldiers have, have served in overseas locations before, like I've served in Iraq and Afghanistan, so we, we know how to work in, in austere conditions. Each of the soldiers we met up with seemed to be on the same page about the mission. Responsible for the employment of our THAAD weapon system to provide uh, ballistic missile defense to all of Guam and the uh, Marianas region. Captain Riley Campbell is the Echo 3 THAAD commander. A threat from North Korea, um, we have a high capability to engage that threat. Um, and it's not just if it's uh, factoring uh, a military base, we are going to defend all of Guam. So no matter where that threat is inbound, whether it's down in uh, Tumon or factoring a military base, we are going to defend all of Guam um, and have that high capability to engage that threat. Right, and you guys are standing guard here 24-7. So for those who may not be aware, what is a th what is the third? Um, so we are a uh, terminal high altitude air defense system. Um, we are capable of engaging ballistic missile uh, threats um, from North Korea. Um, in China as well. Um, so we are here just to provide that coverage of, of any threat um, from one of our uh, adversaries uh, to defend the island and right. this, this homeland. Right. And how many soldiers are currently standing watch in this particular area? Um, so we have over 60 soldiers assigned to our unit um, and we operate in a crew status. The job requires each to stay alert at all times. We operate in a three crew rotational status, um, so we don't have soldiers working a prolonged period of time um, to main their, maintain their proficiency and readiness. Um, but between our three crews, very proficient, um, very capable of, of engaging any threat that would be inbound to the island. Special Joseph Cristobal walks us through what happens when he shows up for duty. My daily routine for that size, ensuring the equipment stays uh, functional, um, ensuring that in the command post for myself, is ensuring that um, the, I, I relay information to uh, to our higher echelon units. Uh, pretty much, just my my job is purely reports. That's purely, purely reports yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that. So, what does it feel like, especially in light of you know? 
threats coming out of North Korea, how does it feel to be, to standing, to be standing watch for the entire community? Um, it's a big responsibility because, um, well, for one, it's the way we put it is we're the, the tip of the spear of defending um, of the homeland defense. So it's, yeah, that's how I put it. Just a big responsibility that we stay resilient and ensuring our, yeah, ensuring to protect the Guam and all of us. Rainbow gives us a closer view of the THAAD. So uh, this is the THAAD radar. Uh, this is the eyes of our system. This is how we see everything that uh, you know, fire control and our launchers see, and so it helps us do our job, right? So our pieces of equipment that, uh, that we have behind us here, we have uh, our, our PPUs, which uh, generate our power, our CU, which is our cooling system, and our radar, which is right behind me, which is the actual eyes. And then uh, we have our other piece of equipment over here, which is our EEU, that's the manned portion. So that's where myself or my soldiers would uh, actually be inside controlling uh, the radar itself. It's the eyes of the system. This is going to see any incoming ballistic threats, uh, that are coming up so that our, uh, you know, our fire control can see those threats and you know, launch our missiles. And then our radar actually uh, helps the missiles track towards that particular you know, uh, incoming target. If ever activated, at least three soldiers will be used at any given time to man the system. But there's a risky part of that job. This uh, emits radio frequency and at very, very high levels. So as we have our keep out zone that's roped off, uh, that is inside of our site. And uh, you know, like uh, Colonel Stafford was saying, we have several physical measures that uh, we take to make sure that everybody is safe within our site, including our Sec4 people and our people and the civilians that are here. This that launcher can hold up to eight interceptor missiles where they will uh, attack and defend any of our assets from any enemy ballistic missiles. So over here, we can see, you see it holds up to eight. And they are in place here on these outrigger pads right here where it'll stabilize and keep the launcher as center and level as possible. That way it has maximum efficiency to properly uh, defend any of our ballistic missiles. Wow, so if you can kind of give our viewers an idea, what does it look like to operate this equipment? So to operate this equipment, what we would do is it is a two-man crew. So I would have one person be designated over here along these handles where they would help elevate the launcher as well. And on this side, there are also more uh, levers and handles where we can erect the launcher and have it fully centered to a um, standard angle so where they can, all, they can all face the same direction and take down anything that comes over this direction. Sergeant Zamora says that that launchers only take two soldiers at any given time to set up and ensure it's safe to operate. Still, each soldier assigned here plays a vital role in defending the THAAD and its mission. We'll always be here for you guys. We're, we're really quick. We know what we're doing. We're on top of our game. And I trust our leadership and our soldiers that we will be able to get the job done no matter what. A job that comes with sacrifice and assurances that this team will stay ready to guard the tip of the spear. I hope you, as well as your viewers, uh, feel more confident in, in our system and our soldiers that are out here doing this defensive Guam mission. We take this very, very seriously, and we are bringing the best soldiers and equipment to protect this island. And then uh, secondly, I just want to um, point out that uh, take pride in your Guam National Guard. The National Guard has been just amazing mission partners uh, for us here on Guam, and we could not do this mission without them. So great, great uh, um, soldiers here on the Guam National Guard. Uh, for Task Force Talon, and so, um, thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Well, again, you guys, that.